Hi, this video is about model reduction. We have seen that the system can be represented as a static and a dynamic model, but at the same time there is a possibility that the system is a higher order system and how we can, in this video we will look into what are the way, what is one particular way to approximate the system to a single simple systems with lesser, um, uh, lesser, lesser order but at the same time without compromising on uh, the, uh, the performance in the operating range of frequencies. So uh, the step here is of course the objective here is to simplify a complicated model. We should be able to tune PID controllers with the simplified models that we will get it after approximation. For the uh, systems that we are looking at to control with PID controllers, these transfer functions are uh, either represented as FOTD model which is uh, first order time delay systems or second order time delay systems is what we are aiming to achieve after the approximation. So for approximating this, um, there's a, what we have to look into is defining the frequency of range of interest, frequency range of interest. And once that is done, we will look into um, saying that identifying what is the highest frequency omega star which would be uh, used when we are, uh, when we are operating, uh, when we are implementing or when we are operating this particular system. Identifying the highest frequency omega star for which the, for which the system is working is not, not difficult because we will be to a certain, uh, knowing that these are the input variations that we are going to give it for the, for the system. And this is what my highest frequency uh, omega star is going to be helpful in order to understand um, how the approximations are done. For PI controllers, typically we use this 145 degree phase difference for uh, considering it as a high frequency range as well. So from the control, control part of it also we can consider what should be my uh, omega star. For example, I want to control the system with PI control, then omega star should be, can be selected as omega 145 needless to, regardless of what going to be the actual frequencies of operations. So in order to, to, um, to um, approximate the system or reduce the system to a simplified system with lesser, lesser order, we can bifurcate the actual system in terms of lower, lower order frequency components and the higher frequency components. The, the poles, zeros and time delays which are less or more than omega star uh, are coupled into G, are, are combined in GL of S whereas higher than them are, are, are uh, combined in terms of GH of S when we are, when we are representing in terms of when we are approximating of this. So what we will do here is that omega star will have relevance to where we are breaking this in terms of lower frequency and higher frequency. And this omega star part will take the role in identifying this 1 by 1 plus STS. Below this is my GL of S which will, we will retain from the actual model whereas we will do the approximation for the higher frequency terms. Let us see how we do it. So this higher frequency factor is now we will have, we'll, we'll say that okay this is, this is my TARH which is my the overall um, uh, effective uh, average residence time and so on. So this particular TAR, for example, this is my transfer function and this transfer function is given by uh, two zeros, is having two zeros and three poles along with a uh, time delay L. So effective residence time we have already seen for the cascaded system is nothing but the time, the uh, the uh, summation of all the uh, all the time const constants corresponding to poles plus the time delay and then uh, subtraction of all the uh, time constants corresponding to zeros. So, Skogastis half rule says that once you have identified this ts of t, what we can do here in order to get this uh, 
transfer function, approximated transfer function. The rule can be if it is a first order time delay system approximation, we can do it in this way by applying this kind of a formula. We will look into uh, the approximation, this particular illustration of this particular, how, uh, how to apply this particular rule uh, uh, shortly. Similarly, if it is we want to represent the system as the uh, first order, um, second, order second order time delay system, then this comes out to be the formula. So, when we are approximating this higher order terms, in that case the model error is characterized by TARH plus TS by 2 because this is what your, your, your time delay system turns out to be. And correspondingly at omega star which is the highest frequency of operation, this introduces the 0.1, uh, the, the, this gives you the value equal to 0.1. So, neglected dynamics means what we have done. So, for example, this was the, the higher order term that we approximated it to, to, uh, to this way, the first way which is first order time delay system. Then it is introducing the, the phase lag of 6 degrees extra. That is something is fair enough if you are applying, if you have enough phase margins available. So, then then in that case the approximated system which has neglected dynamics introduced neglected dynamics corresponding to this, this phase lag of 6 degrees is absolutely okay and one can actually neglect this dynamics and work with the approximated system and design the PID control for, it, for the same. Let us see now an illustration of how we are applying this stochastic half rule. Let us understand this with the help of this fourth order system which has the time constants 1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 seconds. So, for this system omega 90 turns out to be 3 and omega 180 turns out to be 31.6. Let us say we have the highest frequency of operation selected as omega star equal to 3. So, now equal to 3 means this is what, so S is equal to 1 we will have to retain because that is the time constant corresponding to, um, to something which is uh, greater than 1 by 3. So, this is a slower system, this is a lower frequency term that we will retain it in GL of S and we will break at 0.1 seconds of the, the, time, the time corresponding to 0.1 second which is just uh, smaller than the frequency of operation for 3, omega star equal to 3. So, with this selection we consider T s is equal to 0.1. So, we are, we are going to break down the system in terms of lower frequencies and higher frequencies corresponding to, at, and this breakdown happens at this particular 0.1 second. So, we initially did what we did here is that we, we arranged this particular transfer function in the decreasing order of the time constants uh, corresponding to the poles. Now as we said this particular lower, lower term is corresponding to this higher, higher uh, time constant term. So my GL of S is Kp by 1 plus S which we will retain it. Our effort is, is in, is in um, approximating this particular higher term which is corresponding to time constant 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 seconds. So, my time constant now effective now average resident time corresponding to the higher frequencies turns out to be the sum of these two time constants which is 0 0.011. There comes the approximate model now where my Kp which was given by Kp by 1 plus st by ts by 2 this was the stochastics um, uh, half rule corresponding to the, uh, so sorry, scogastics. So, this, this was corresponding to the scogastics half rule for the first order time delay system, which is copied in this particular slide now, right. So, in this particular slide. Here you can see that what has been applied here in this formula is T s is equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0
because that's where we have made the breakup and time t is equal to this t is the corresponding lower order term which is equal to 1 and t a r h is what we found out this is 0 0.011 and just a simple substitution of it gives you the approximate time uh, approximate uh, system given by k p by 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 1.05 s and this is my time delay. You can see that what we have done here is we have clubbed up all these higher order frequency um, time constants, time constants corresponding to these higher frequencies in this particular time constant itself. And this is what or or in the or in the line or in the time constant or in the lag term. Okay, so what we have got now is when we apply this and, and see what comes out at omega star is equal to 3 point is for omega star less than 3.3, .3, this omega t terms is less than 0.2. Okay, so this is introducing um, uh, certain phase lag which is corresponding to, uh, to 6 degrees is what uh, we, we what, what the claim is from this particular half roll. Similarly, we can apply um, the breakup at a little higher frequency. So, let us consider that we are intending to break this particular um, break, break this particular transfer function at omega star is equal to 31.6, which is saying that my highest frequency oper operation is 31.6 or somewhere close to it. So, now my lower order transfer function corresponding values are 1 plus s, 1 plus 0.1 s because now we are breaking at 0 .00, 0 0.01 and the higher order term is 0.001 s. So, here now my T s turns out to be 0 0.01. So, we are going to retain this particular time constant 1 plus s as is and this 0.1 s is going to incorporate rest of the higher order terms values and approximate it there. Now, my T a R h is simple which is equal to this because this is having only one, uh, one transfer, one uh, time constant which is 0 0.01. Putting this into the approximate values what we get is 1 plus s 0.1 so, uh, and the time term and, and the with the like term. Since we are retaining this k p by 1 plus s the rest of the term is the approximated values and which turns out to be here. So, this you can see now since we have break, made the breakup over here all the higher order terms corresponding to time constant 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 are now getting reflected into the time constant 0 0.1 as 0 0.1005 and a time delay term corresponding to a very small time. So, this, this way uh, when we are approximating the higher order system to a lower order system, one can look forward for tuning it used with the help of PID controls. And this is why we can we can also give an answer that why the industrial control is dominated by the PID control. Because we are working in a particular operating range of frequencies. With given this particular method, we know what is my highest frequency of operation. If we are confined uh, our operations within this particular range of frequencies capped by this highest frequency, we can make an approximation something like this and we can apply the PID tune and we, we should not be worried about what is the dynamics for the higher frequencies because now we are not even operating in that range. The effects of those higher frequencies are just accounted into this by with the help of an approximation which is of course introducing certain errors into the, into the modeling but fair enough those approximations, those errors are negligible and we should not be bothered about it and they, they are not introducing any stability issues for us because we typically keep a fair enough phase margin and the magnitude and, and the magnitude margins, gain margins. Uh, that is all on this model reduction.